In this section, we'll be learning how to do all of the basic operations with matrices, such as how do we add them, how do we multiply them, so on and so forth. And we'll also be discussing what properties hold true with matrices, such as commutative, associative, distributive, so on and so forth. So the very first thing that we need to learn to talk about is the dimension of the matrix. And so that is defined by the number of rows by the number of columns. And so I have two examples here. And so this is easy enough that you probably don't even need me to show it to you. So I suggest that you pause the video and figure out what the dimensions of these two matrices are. Okay, the answer to number one is a two by four because it has one, two rows by one, two, three, four columns. And then in example two, it is a three by two. It has three rows and two columns. Okay, then we need to learn about some other definitions, some special matrices. The very first one is the zero matrix. It is denoted by a bold zero, um, and so every entry in that matrix is a zero. These can take on any dimensions. So here I have a two by three, but nothing says that these can only be a two by three dimension. We can have a zero matrix of any dimensions whatsoever. The identity matrix we learned about in the last section when we row reduced matrices. These are square matrices, so that's the big thing that you need to know here. It can be any dimension of any square, so we mostly deal with two by two and three by three here in this class, but in other classes you can talk about lots of other dimensions. And we know that it has to be zeros everywhere except for the main diagonal, which is the top left to the bottom right, those need to be ones. And so it is called I for identity. This one is sub three because it is three dimensions, three rows by three columns. So sometimes it just tells us I when it doesn't really matter what the dimensions are, and other times it specifically denotes what square identity matrix you're talking about. Okay, equality of matrices. So what does it actually mean for two matrices to be equivalent? The very first thing that we must specify is for two matrices to be equivalent, they have to have the same dimension. And then past that, basically, each entry needs to be the same. So for example, in this example here, the top left needs to be the same, the bottom right needs to be the same, the bottom left needs to be the same, and the bottom right needs to be the same. So you basically just set each entry equivalent to each other, and then therefore you can solve for your variables to figure out what actually means these matrices to be equivalent. Well, really they need to be identical. So in this example here, we know that x plus y has to be equal to five, that's my top left. We know that 12 has to be equal to 5x plus 2. We know that 2x minus 3 is equal to 3y minus 8. And we know that 2 minus y is equivalent to x minus y. So I set each entry equal to each other. From here, you can just pick out the easiest equation to solve for, and then you can go throughout the rest of it. So for me, I probably would solve for this one here because it's only got one variable. If I subtract two from both sides, that would tell me that 10 is equal to five X. Divide by five tells me that X is equal to two. So once I know that, then I can figure out where my Y's are. Well, then I can just use that to solve for this one here. So if I have two plus Y is equal to five, if I subtract two from both sides, that tells me Y is equal to three. And so we have just, figured out our x and y variable. You might stop here, or what I encourage you to do is to plug them into your other equations to make sure that these matrices can actually be equivalent, because sometimes they can't actually match up to be equivalent. Okay, so here in my third equation, if I substitute two and four x 
and I substitute 3 in for y, does this come out to be a true equation? So I have 4 minus 3 is equal to 1, and I have 9 minus 8 is equal to 1. So that one holds. And then down here, if I, again, substitute 2 and 3 in, I see that I have the exact same equation. So if I want these matrices to be equivalent, then I just know that x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 3. So again, they have to have the same dimensions, and each entry has to be exactly the same for matrices to be equivalent to each other. Okay. Now on to our basic operations. So the very first one is addition of matrices. How do we add them, and when can we, and when can't we add them? Well, the very first thing to note is that if you do want to add them, your matrices have to be equivalent dimensions. Just like we saw in the last step, where matrices to be equal, they have to have equivalent dimensions. And then basically, once we do that, we just add each corresponding entry. So I've given three matrices here on the left. Let's figure out how we can do this math here on the right. So I'm going to start with part A, and I want to add B plus C. So my B matrix is 5, negative 2, 3, negative 1, negative 4, 5. And I want to add that to my C matrix, which is negative 2, 6, negative 2, 8, 3, negative 2. So first thing I need to do is confirm that my dimensions are the same. Of course, these are both 3 by 2s. And then I just add each corresponding entry. So top left adds to top left. Top right adds to top right. And I should end up with the same dimensions. So here, 5 minus 2 gives me 3. Negative 2 plus 6 gives me 4. 3 minus 2 gives me 1. Negative 1 plus 8 gives me 7. Negative 4 plus 3 gives me negative 1. And 5 minus 2 gives me 3. So notice I end up again with a 3 by 2 matrix where I've just added each respective entry. And that's all it takes to add two matrices. OK, now let's see if we can add C plus A where my C matrix is negative 2, 6, negative 2, 8, 3, negative 2. And I want to add that to my A matrix, 4, negative 9, negative 2, 1. Well, I see that this one is a 3 by 2, and this one is a 2 by 2. So my dimensions are not the same. And so our answer here is we actually cannot add these because they are not the same dimensions. And that's all we can do with it. We cannot take it any farther. OK? Moving on to our next operation of subtraction of matrices, it's the exact same thing. So they need to be equivalent dimensions, and then we just subtract each respective entry. So in part A, to do B minus C, I do 5, negative 2, 3, negative 1, negative 4, 5, and I am subtracting my C matrix, negative 2, 6, negative 2, 8, and 3, negative 2. So be careful with your negatives here because they're easy to get lost. So in my top left, I have 5 minus a negative 2. Well, that's the same thing as 5 plus 2, which gives me 7. Top right, a negative 2 minus 6. So those are both negatives. Gives me negative 8. Here I have 3 minus a negative 2, or 3 plus 2, which gives me 5. Negative 1 minus 8 gives me negative 9. Negative 4 minus 3 gives me negative 7. And 5 minus a negative 2, or 5 plus 2, gives me a 7. And again, notice I end up with a 3 by 2 matrix, because they always should hold the same form. Part B, I'm not even going to write out, because notice my C matrix has dimensions, again, just like the last slide, a 3 by 2. My A matrix has a 2 by 2. So I note that I cannot subtract, because my dimensions of these two matrices are not the same. OK, our next operation is scalar multiplication. 
And so you might have seen this if you've done vectors in the past. If not, then this is probably something new to you. Basically, what it is, is it takes the product of a number, just a set number, and you multiply it through the whole matrix. So each entry in the matrix gets multiplied by the exact same number. So, for example, in part A, I have 3A. Well, that is like taking 3 times my matrix of A. So this is how it would look if I were to write it out. My scalar is 3 times my matrix over here. And then basically what you do is you kind of distribute that through every single entry. So I have 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times negative 9 is negative 27. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And 3 times 1 is 3. And so I have just done an example of scalar multiplication, where you multiply a set number by every single entry. And you can do this no matter what the dimension of your matrix is. So in part B, I'm looking for negative B. Well, that's really like taking a negative 1 times my matrix of B. 5, negative 2, 3, negative 1, negative 4, 5. So I basically am just changing my signs. So my answer is going to be negative 5, positive 2, negative 3, positive 1, positive 4, and negative 5. And so I have distributed that negative through my matrices. And so again, another example of scalar multiplication. So the one thing I do want to discuss here is if we were looking in the real number, so just basic numbers, elementary math, we learned that A minus B, like 5 minus 2, is the exact same thing as A plus a negative B, is 5 plus a negative 2. Well, the subtraction property holds true when we are doing matrices as well. So A minus B is the exact same thing as A plus a negative B, where a negative 1 is like your scalar multiplication. So just like I saw in that example here, this negative B, that's the same thing as saying I could take a different matrix, matrix and subtract B. And so when I saw an example here, B minus C, I actually could have taken this negative, distributed it through first, that's my scalar multiplication, and then just added it to my previous matrix. So our property in the real number, A plus negative B is A minus B, that's the same thing that holds true when we are doing matrices instead. So that is just something that I just wanted you to make note of. Okay, in the next video, we will be continuing on with other matrix operations.